Welcome to Hip Talk, the podcast where we talk about all the new cool features and innovations coming to the Hedera network. My name is Keith Cole, and I'm a product manager at Hashgraph. And today I'm honored to be joined by Ty Smith, who's a, also a product manager at Hashgraph. And for this call is the, and most importantly, the release manager for Hedera release 57. Welcome, Ty. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to be back. All right. Well, the first new, the first release of 2025. So, um, a great, uh, it's going to be the start of a great year, I'm sure. Um, so for hip, for release 57, I think the main topic we want to discuss is a, is a very exciting hip that I think that, that I know internally and also uh, within the community, there's been a lot of interest and excitement around, and that is hip 423 long-term scheduled transactions. So maybe we could start by just talking about what are long-term scheduled transactions? Like what, what does that functionality entail? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it seems basic on its surface, but it's actually really uh, when you dig into it, pretty cool. Um, so, it's just transactions can now be scheduled up to two months in advance in the future. Um, that's our initial limit. That's what's coming out in four two three, um, and that's compared to the thirty minute limit that currently exists on mainnet before fifty seven. And so that's a pretty big expansive window from thirty minutes to two months. Um, there's a whole bunch of new innovations that I think can can spawn from that. A change as a you know if you were a developer how would you take advantage of this functionality like what, what does it change how does it change maybe how you would do a scheduled transaction today yeah so um i was a little brief on that front end but there's there's a couple changes in here not just the time length um but also the expansion of transaction types that can go into a scheduled transaction so um the ones that i'm most excited about that are in here are now you can schedule a contract call you can schedule a contract create call or update or a contract delete. And so um, this allows someone, if they knew they wanted to create a smart contract in a month or if they wanted to delete a smart contract in a month, if they had the correct amount of signatures of a DAO, um, there's just a lot of flexibility here. And um, that, yeah, that expansion of transaction types and that expansion of time window uh, just, just adds a lot more, you know, uh, Ability to have a DAO that, you know, instead of a 30 minute window of getting everyone in front of their computer, signing a transaction, making sure it gets posted to the network in time, you now have a little bit more of a leisure uh, time about it. And you have flexibility of exactly what's going to happen. Um, and the last part of it, what is really that's that, that's new is autonomous execution, uh, which is which is really, really neat. Um, so transactions previously, when they met the threshold of uh, success, they would execute. Now you can determine a point in the future in which the transaction execute, and um, that's the expiration time. And wait for expiry is a Boolean that is on the scheduled transaction. And so I can say, I want this to happen uh, in a month, and I want you to wait for expiry. So that means even if it requires 10 keys uh, in, a, in the threshold 10 out of 10, and it gets all of those in the first day, it's not going to execute until a month later. Um, and so that's that's really, really cool when um, previously one that was not at all possible, really. Um, it was sort of, sort of difficult to shuffle people around to make sure they're in that 30 minute window or sign the transaction bytes before you create the scheduled transaction. Um, now that's a lot easier. But it also allows you to dictate points in time of which, you know, something's going to take. Um, there is a little bit, you know, there are, there is throttling and resource allocation in here. It's not all guaranteed of the nanosecond that you schedule it. Uh, but that throttling of scheduled transactions and regular transactions uh, has a really nice uh, architecture to it where the scheduled transactions will execute at a clip uh, continually while not impacting the regular network uh, transaction speed. Um, so yeah, you're within the, the, I don't know why I'm getting too far to do it, but the nanosecond time, it, it's a little bit of a, a dependency on how many transactions are happening at that time. But you can guarantee pretty much, you know, within uh, that second, within that 30 second, um, two months away, this is, this is going to execute. So I, I think that's, that's a really high um, value add to the network. And uh, as this expands, because this is just, you know, 423 is expanding the, the time length from 30 minutes to two months. Um, as we expand, you know, to the contract service, you know, smart contracts will be able to create future transactions that are guaranteed to execute on a certain amount of time. That's that's a very unique feature, and that's that's not what's in four two three. But these are the things that will be enabled in the future from this. this 
Yeah, as you kind of alluded to, I think long-term scheduled transactions deals with a very human problem where we want to have products on the Hedera network, which you know either require a counter signature or maybe require the gathering of many signatures. And you know it's often been very challenging to coordinate that within a 30-minute time window, especially if like people are in different living in parts of different different parts of the world or different time zones. So I think like this will enable a lot of exciting use cases where you do want the security or you want the mechanism of having multiple parties agree to something. Um, is that is that how you kind of view it? Yeah, yeah. In a decentralized, uh, you know, network with a global uh, audience, um, it's really tricky to make sure everyone's awake at the same time to sign that transaction. So, yeah, I think uh, one of them is definitely a user experience. You know, there's just a nicer way of being able to do these DAO votes in a longer uh, window of success. Um yeah, yeah, that that, and then the, the autonomous execution, I think, is really going to be sort of the golden egg of this feature as we go forward, where uh, you can dictate uh, this transaction does or doesn't execute. You know, if you don't meet the threshold of the keys. So if you're in a DAO and you say, "Hey, this is our vote. This vote is going to create a new contract um, that's going to deploy our new product." If we get the threshold of eight uh, out of our sixteen votes, and if only seven signed by that time, it doesn't deploy. And so it, it, it really does bring a lot more, um, I think, autonomy to, to DAOs and flexibility of what exactly are you scheduling and how it's sort of um, trustless. It's a very trustless execution of this uh, based on signatures. And what can you explain, you know, now that we have this mechanism to do a longer time period to collect signatures, I mean, often also a very normal thing is that Maybe you set you send out something for a signature, but then you know something changes, and then you want to kind of retract that, and maybe you know actually make some changes and get a signature on something new. What does that mechanism look like within the the feature set? I believe that's just inherited from the old scheduled transaction where you can cancel one that's already been submitted to the network. So I don't think four two three adapts anything. Um, for clarity, if you're not if, if anyone listening is not aware, um, scheduled transactions exist. They just have now been expanded. And so this this just is an expansion of the previous feature set that was there. So if you need to cancel a, a scheduled transaction, you would do it the same way as you would in, in release 56 now previously. So, you know, we, I think we've alluded to a little bit, but when you think about the use cases for HIP 423, uh, long-term scheduled transactions, what, what are the, you think, the, the groups of users or the uh, building applications on Hedera like who will get the most utility from this new functionality? Yeah, I, I think we definitely did the uh, the DAOs uh, a bunch already, but I think that is a really big unlock. Just you know, transparency, governance, um, dictating time of execution, uh, making sure the threshold is met, um, prolonged approval periods for retail users. Um, I think the the biggest section of retail that interacts with scheduled transactions is probably secure trade in Hashpack or uh, in Kabila. I think they also have something called secure trade. Um, all wallets, it's, they use the scheduled transaction, uh, which has a 30 minute window. And if uh, I know if I come from sort of the NFT genre of the community, uh, trading NFTs and everything, it was always hard. You'd be like, hey, I want to you know do this transaction, but I have a 30 minute window and the guy or, or a woman on the other side didn't sign it in time. And it's just, it was clunky. All of that's going to get a better user experience because now you have a, a two month window and the, the ability to do, um, I guess, asynchronous P2P commerce will be much more relaxed, uh, which up until this point was pretty difficult, or at least, you know, again, everyone's got to be at the computer, which isn't always true on a, on a globe. Um, and then the, the smart contract upgrades, uh, being able to schedule smart contract executions, I think for users, as time goes on, more and more use cases of where that will be really applicable, especially like, hey, I'm going to update the smart contract at this time. Uh, and then the, anyone who's you know aware or in that product or in that project, they can know that that's already submitted to the network and you have 18 days to finish up whatever you need to do before the change happens. So, um, yeah, I think it'll also be good for, I guess, asynchronous um, workflows uh, of projects uh, and of communities. I guess the, the last question I had was, so I think there's going to be a lot of amazing applications for long-term scheduled transactions, but it's not a great fit for all types of transactions. Um, how would you, when people are thinking about the utility of long-term scheduled transactions, where would you maybe use it? And then wh where, maybe more importantly, where, where would you probably not use it? I think uh, at this point, the way that scheduled transactions work is that you submit it to the network and it is public record. And, you know, it is, anyone can see that transaction bytes. 
And so when you're doing a scheduled transaction, um, you have to understand all of that is is public. So if you say it's going to happen at this time, say you're going to do a trade of buying a bunch of tokens from a smart contract or, or you know buying a bunch of HBAR, something like that. Um, the possibility of front running is there because uh, you know even though we don't have a mempool, you now have said, "Hey, world, I'm going to do this transaction at this time," um, and so someone could front run you or sandwich attack you or all of these other things that happen um, typically on other networks. So. Uh, as long as you're okay with the world knowing you're doing this thing, uh, it's totally fine to put in a scheduled transaction. And this is the current state. I think these, uh, you know, how do you do private scheduled transactions is definitely a thought process internally. Uh, and we're always developing new protocols and features. Um, the only other thing I would also uh, previously mention is the execution time. Uh, the transactions execute on best effort basis after expiration, but exact time it is not guaranteed. And so if you have something that absolutely must go out at an absolute, you know, nanosecond hit, um, uh, you know, that's not a guarantee that scheduled transactions have. But again, um, it is a best effort basis. And I think uh, very, very close to what, what you're trying to do in that schedule. For people that want to learn more about HIP423, I mean, obviously they can go to docs.hedera.com. Any, any other sources of info that you'd recommend? Um, at this point, I don't think there's, uh, you know, a robust blog out yet. Um, but yeah, I definitely would recommend the docs and just going through the scheduled transaction um, section. Uh, it, I guess the, the biggest thing I would say is uh, educate yourself on the base layer of scheduled transactions and then the extension layer, which is 423. So get a full holistic understanding of the feature uh, of the protocol on the network and then uh, go forth and innovate. And for those looking to uh, test out long-term scheduled transactions, um, you can uh, go to our website, status.hedera.com to see where uh, Release 57 is. Is it on testnet? Is it on mainnet? Uh, and where you, sh where you can uh, test it and play with it. Um, yeah. Uh, any, anything else, Ty? Yeah, that covered it. I'm, uh, I'm really excited for this release. And uh, hello, 2025. Yeah, it's a great way to start 2025. So thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, and uh, have a great day.